Welcome to the Spy Collection. I'm Anastasios and this is a follow-up from our previous video, The Spy Spot Episode 7. It's not common for most people to see what an actual active measures disinformation operation looks like. But this book that we briefly showed in Spy Spot Episode 7 is a great example of that. During the Cold War, Germany was split into two parts, separated by the Berlin Wall. West Germany was known as the Federal Republic of Germany, aligned with the Western nation states, and in East Germany we had the German Democratic Republic, which was aligned with the communist world. Clearly this made Berlin a center for espionage from both sides, and this book is one of the many examples that demonstrate that. The reason for that is that it was a location where the two worlds were so close to each other, making them ideal for espionage activities. The book's author, Julius Mader, also known under the alias Thomas Bergner, was a German writer, journalist and lawyer, born in Czechoslovakia and based in East Germany. In 1968, he published this book, the who's who in CIA, which wasn't limited only to CIA undercover operatives in 120 different countries, but also included some from the Office of Intelligence Research, the Military Intelligence, the NSA and the FBI. This is an important part of this information covered influence operations. The core of the message has to be real information, but the value of this information comes from how you present this message to influence the population. From the CIA's archive we can find this May 8, 1968 news article that shows us how this book was promoted by the press of the time. East Germany plans Who's Who in CIA, Berlin May 7th. A book entitled Who's Who in the CIA will be published soon in East Germany. It was reported today. Western intelligence sources said they understood the book listed the names of about 3,500 persons mostly Americans, working in the Western Hemisphere and in neutral countries. The author, Julius Mader, contends that all those named are working for the Central Intelligence Agency. Most are said to be American consuls, attachés, businessmen and other individuals living in Latin America, Western Europe, including West Berlin, Africa and the Middle East. The date on which Who's Who in the CIA will be published is not known yet, but it is said to be soon probably June 1st for the German language edition and four weeks later for the English version. Now, based on what we know today, this book was published with direct support from East German spy agency, the Ministry for State Security, which is commonly referred to as the Stasi, as well as the closest partner of the Stasi, the Soviet KGB. For example, in the now declassified Stasi archives, we read that a prominent exception was the publicist Julius Mader, who was an OIBE, meaning Officer in Special Operations, of the Stasis Agitation Department from 1962 to 1989, and who achieved a broad impact with his intelligence service specific books, e.g. No Longer Secret 1966, Who's Who in CIA 1968. In the 1950s, the Stasi Agitation worked on denouncing divers, spies, and their western backers. Public relations work was significantly intensified from 1953 onwards as part of the concentrated strikes strategy. Major arrest operations codenamed Firework 1953, Fire 1954, and Bleach 1955, each resulting in hundreds of arrests, were ended with press conferences. If you'd like to read more about mothers' covert influence activities, you can also read this research article from the Cold War History Journal, Volume 5, Issue 2, from 2005. As always, all our references are available in the video's description. Mother didn't publish this book under any publisher. Literally, he put his personal details as the publisher and claimed that all of that was a result of his own research, giving the reader two cards 
to send him corrections of more information on American spies, to include them in future publications. Apparently, all of that was an effort to make this a more believable cover story. Actually, in the first pages of the book, It says that the biographies were compiled with cooperation of Mohammed Abdel Nabi from Beirut, Ambalal Bad from Mumbai, Fernando Gamara from Mexico City, and Shozo Oshashi from Yokohama. This was again an effort to bring more justification to the volume of information revealed. Although most of the information shared was real and accurate, the book was used to portray the message of American expansionism and illegal activities abroad, paint a negative picture to the general public and at the same time impact all those American spies that could no longer operate undercover. For example, the last paragraph of the foreword of the book written by Julius Mader himself says, We know, it is true, that the extensive intelligence machinery of the imperialist United States of America was not, is not, and will never be in position to turn back the will of history. The destinies of the nations cannot be fixed in the offices of the CIA. The US intelligence services, though, plan and organize dangerous actions at every hour. For this reason, the people of all nations are warned of the organizers of the CIA machinations. In this sense, further reference work can follow. Actually, in that same year, in 1968, a Czechoslovakian spy, an officer of the STB named Ladislav Bittmann, defected the United States under the protection of the CIA. Bittmann's expertise at the STB was disinformation operations, and he had a close collaboration with the Soviet KGB. In 1992, Ladislav Bittmann contributed to a report for the U.S. House of Representatives Committee on Appropriations by the U.S. Information Agency, where he stated about Mother's book that about half of the names listed in the book are real CIA operatives. The other half are people who were just American diplomats or various officials, and it was prepared with the expectation that naturally many, many Americans operating abroad, diplomats and so on, would be heard because their names were exposed as CIA officials. As you can see on the line above, he also stated that he was a co-author of it as the head of disinformation for the STB. It's worth mentioning that apart from the names and details of different American individuals, the book also included a few different diagrams. If you'd like to study them in detail, please pause the video. That was the structure and organization of the American Intelligence Services. This, the structure and functional plan of the Office of Intelligence Research, OIR, in the State Department. The structure and functional plan of the Military Intelligence Headquarters of the United States. Structure and functional plan of the NSA at Fort Meade, Maryland. The same for the FBI in Washington, D.C. And lastly, the system of cover organizations used by the CIA at the time. This is another interesting declassified document from CIA's archive. This was a secret order from the CIA chief of the European Division a year after the book's publication to a CIA agent in East Germany, codenamed C.A. Young, to intercept the mails of Julius Mader from another person. Based on that, we can assume that CIA agent C.A. Young was working somewhere in the East Germany's postal service in Berlin. As you can see, it said, C.A. Young will pass to us unopened any letter to Dr. Julius Mader from Jakob Oberstein, also known as Aaron Silberstein and we will forward them to headquarters as requested in paragraph 5 of the reference. The intercept of East Berlin mail by C.A. Young is a matter of chance and we cannot ensure that they intercept all the mail to a given address. This is the probable reason 
why earlier letters to mother from Oberstein were not intercepted. Julius' mother was under close surveillance by the CIA. For instance, in this August 1969 CIA processing action request, we read that the most recent information on Schwerd is correspondence originating from Kalikak but provided to Arve Rock and Telnergo concerning a letter written by Sven to Julius' mother. Pertinent to this exchange are other letters written to mother, dated 1969, which may be the reason why CA Tusk's renewed interest in Schwerd's activities. Even four years after the book's publication, in 1973, we find this CIA processing request saying that forwarded herewith is a copy of the latest in a series of letters from a German in Peru, probably the Schwendt mentioned in reference D, addressed to Julius' mother, and continues that it appears mother had tried to check on the World War II background of Rule von Lillestern through the author of the attached letter, but the letter writer does not remember Rule von Lillestern well, and it is followed by the intercepted mail that the CIA agents copied to spy on mother's communications along with an English translation of it. As always, links in the description. Here is a last example from the CIA's archive, this time from July of 1974. This was a routing and record sheet and we read that, check with and a redacted name, on any recent developments regarding Julius' mother, author of who's who in CIA. That redacted name had stayed in touch with us by mail and we saw him briefly on his visit to us last year. He is the only link we have to Soviet bloc disinformation activities as conducted by mother, who is very prolific as of late in criticism of CIA. Apparently we won't go through all the CIA archive documents, but those clearly indicate the position of the CIA on mother due to this publication, as well as their growing awareness that this book wasn't the result of investigative journalism, but a covert influence, an active measures disinformation operation of the East German Stasi. Many years later it became known that mother was a key asset for the East German Stasi's disinformation operations targeting their adversary spy agencies. Here is a quote from the 2006 book Spying on Science, Western Intelligence in Divided Germany, 1945-1961. The communist word for induced defection was Abwerbung. It was denounced in numerous propaganda publications, most importantly those commissioned by the Ministry for State Security. One of the Ministry's main channels for making public information about Western spying and subversion was Julius Mader. Considered the DDR's leading expert on Western intelligence, he posed as a freelance writer. In fact, he was an undercover officer of the MFS's agitation department. Understandably, as the CIA was getting more and more information on that book being the result of a Stasi disinformation operation to impact their covert and clandestine operations globally, they wanted to find a way to fight back. And as a result of that, six years after the publication of this book, in 1974, an American journalist with close ties to the CIA, John Barron, published this book. KGB, The Secret Work of Soviet Secret Agents. This book included the details of approximately 1,600 alleged KGB and GRU Soviet Union intelligence officers operating undercover in various countries. Additionally, it revealed for the first time some of the Soviet covert operations such as influencing the then Egyptian president Gamal Abdel Nasser the sexual entrapment of some Western diplomats and more. Of course, this book needs an episode on its own, so we won't cover it here. In summary, nowadays, it is considered a CIA retaliation on Stasis, who's who in CIA, but just like in this case here, there is more to it. It's also worth noting that this is how the book looks like, with its dust cover, And here is a copy of it without it. For people researching and investigating the history of espionage, both books, as well as even more recent similar disinformation operations, 
are an invaluable research tool. Who's who in the CIA continues to be utilized by researchers as another data point when looking to activities of the United States covered operatives in the Cold War era. In conclusion, we saw how spy agencies were using journalists for covert influence and disinformation operations in the Cold War from both East Germany and the United States. More interestingly, the disinformation active measures operation for this book had a dual purpose, both to create a negative opinion on the general public for CIA's activities as well as directly impede thousands of CIA officers' ability to conduct undercover operations since it revealed their identities publicly. Such operations are happening today too, so be very cautious of how you process what you read and always question how someone has obtained the information they are sharing and why are they sharing it, especially if it's associated by the same person to a particular negative or positive perspective instead of just reporting the event as it is. This information is a very powerful active measures capability and the cyberspace has revived this decades-old tradecraft to a whole new level. Nevertheless, books like this are a unique historical reminder that nothing is as it seems.